The following section of this recording should be used for practice test one, section one, listening comprehension. Part A, directions. In part A, you will hear short conversations between two speakers. At the end of each conversation, a third voice will ask a question about what was said. The question will be spoken just one time. After you hear a conversation and the question about it, read the four possible answers and decide which one would be the best answer to the question you have heard. Then on your answer sheet, find the number of the problem and mark your answer. Number one. I hear Jan isn't teaching here this term. That's right. She was fired. What does the woman say about Jan? Number two. Nancy, I heard you were late for class this morning. I overslept and missed the bus. Why does the woman say she was late? Number three. I heard on the radio that the eastbound lanes of Interstate 4 are closed. Yes, a tractor trailer jackknifed and caused a huge pileup. What are the speakers discussing? Number four. What do you think of Professor Conrad's class? Well, his lectures are interesting enough, but I think he could choose more appropriate questions for the tests. What does the woman say about Professor Conrad's class? Number five. Are you going to watch the movie on TV tonight? No, I think I'll watch the soccer game and then the documentary on volcanoes. What does the man say is the first program he is planning to watch? Number six. Where did Suzanne come from? She was born in Switzerland and grew up in Sweden, but she's a citizen of England. Which country does the woman say is Suzanne's present home? Number seven. Karen is entering Stetson University this fall. So she did apply. What had the man assumed about Karen? Number eight. Why are you wearing that cream all over your arms? I ate wild berries at the picnic last week and I broke out in a rash. What does the woman say happened to her? Number nine. Would you please spell your name for me, sir? Sure. W I double -T, T N E R. How does the man say he spells his last name? Number ten. I have to go out of town for a meeting tomorrow, and I need somebody to work for me. Sure, I could use the extra hours. What is the man probably going to do? Number 11. 
Number 11. Louie, how did your football team do last season? We won three, lost five, and tied twice. How many games does the man say his team tied? Number 12. Do you know what happened to Sally? She couldn't find the classroom until after the class had begun. What does the man say happened to Sally? Number 13. Did April visit you in the hospital when you were ill? No, but it was certainly kind of her to send me flowers. What does the man say about the flowers? Number 14. William looked very tired this morning. He drove George's car from Georgia to New York without stopping to sleep. What does the woman mean? Number 15. How was the turnout at the meeting last night? Fewer people came than I had expected. What does the man say about attendance at the meeting? Number 16. Was Harry successful at his new venture? He spent five hours knocking on doors, but he didn't sell a single magazine. What does the man say about Harry? Number 17. Did Frank have his house repaired? The contractor said the repairs would be very expensive, but he decided to have the work done. What does the woman say about the repairs to Frank's house? Number 18. What did you do last night? I should have studied, but I was too tired. What does the man say he did last night? Number 19. Do you think Gloria will come with us? I understand she hasn't gone to a movie in years. What does the woman say about Gloria? Number 20. What happened to Harvey today? His face turned bright red when the teacher asked him a question. What does the woman say about Harvey? Number 21. Good afternoon. I'm Roseanne, your flight attendant. Welcome aboard. Hello. I've got seat A8. I hope it's by a window so that I can see the view. Where did this conversation most probably take place? Number 22. I heard Jane isn't going to be working this summer. That's right. She's taking sick leave. What does the woman say about Jane? Number 23. A change has sure come over you. 
I finally had my annual review meeting with my boss. It couldn't have gone better. What does the woman mean? Number 24. Doesn't Professor Jones realize there are only two days before the test? He apologized for not announcing the test earlier. What does the woman say about the professor? Number 25. Stacy had a disagreement with her boss yesterday, didn't she? She says she is leaving her job for good. What does the man say about Stacy? Number 26. Did John stop at the store? No, he had some money, but not enough to buy groceries. What does the woman say about John? Number 27. I can't believe there were no empty seats at the rally. They expected 80 people, but twice that many showed up. How many people does the woman say attended the rally? Number 28. Are we doing anything today? We were supposed to meet Fred and Mary at the movies, but we're broke. What does the man mean? Number 29. I understand Anna is mad at Ted. Yes, he refused to go to the banquet, even though he was going to receive an award. Why does the woman say Anna is angry at Ted? Number 30. How does Mike like his coffee? He likes sugar in it, but nothing else. What does the man say about Mike? Part B, Directions. In Part B, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will be asked some questions. The conversations and questions will be spoken just one time. They will not be written out for you, so you will have to listen carefully in order to understand and remember what the speaker says. When you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and decide which one would be the best answer to the question you have heard. Then on your answer sheet, find the number of the problem and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Questions 31 through 34 are based on the following conversation. How long have you been out of the country, miss? Where did you go? I spent three weeks in Switzerland and one week in Greece. Did you spend any time in agricultural areas there? No, I stayed mostly in the cities and spent one day at the beach in Corinth. Do you have any plants, meat, or alcoholic beverages to declare? I have only two bottles of wine. What else did you buy? A couple of festive costumes, books, and native arts and crafts. How much did you spend on your purchases while you were away? About $300. Please open this small suitcase for me. Okay, give this card to the official at the red desk. Number 31. Where did this conversation most likely take place?
Number 32. How many countries did the woman visit? Number 33. What does the man ask the woman to do? Number 34. What did the woman have to declare? Questions 35 through 38 are based on the following conversation. I hear that Paul Schmidt has written a new novel. Yes, it's a science fiction piece called Martian Renaissance. Sounds intriguing. What's the plot like? It deals with a five-man, one-woman crew on a three-year mission to Mars. Is their mission successful? Well, in some respects it is. They have a series of incredible adventures once they land. Do they meet any real Martians? Yes. They are even held captive by them. What do the Martians look like? Are they little green men? You'll have to read the book to find out. Number 35. What is the name of Paul Schmidt's new book? Number 36. What type of book is it? Number 37. How long did the mission to Mars take? Number 38. Which of the following is not mentioned? Part C, Directions. In Part C, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will be asked some questions. The talks and questions will be spoken just one time. They will not be written out for you, so you will have to listen carefully in order to understand and remember what the speaker says. When you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and decide which one would be the best answer to the question you have heard. Then on your answer sheet, find the number of the problem and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Questions 39 through 42 are based on the following lecture about the game of High Lie. Although played quite well in Florida and Latin America, High Lie is not an American game. This handball-type game originated in the Basque region of Spain. High Lie is one of the fastest-moving ball games. In Florida, it is legal to place bets on the players, somewhat similar to betting in horse racing. Bets are placed on a win-place-show basis, that is, first, second, and third. Sports experts agree that High Lie requires more skill, speed, endurance, and nerve than any other ball game. Number 39. Where did High Lie originate? Number 40. Betting on High Lie players is compared to what other sport? Number 41. Which of the following is not true? Number 42. 
To what game is Hylai compared in the reading? Questions 43 through 47 are based on the following lecture about Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Graham Bell was born in Edinburgh, Scotland in the 19th century and later came to the United States. Several members of his family did a great deal to encourage him in the field of science. His father was most instrumental in supervising his work with the deaf. While he dealt with the deaf and investigated the science of acoustics, his studies eventually led to the invention of the multiple telegraph and his greatest invention, the telephone. The last quarter of a century of his life was dedicated to advances in aviation. Number 43. What was considered to be Alexander Graham Bell's greatest achievement? Number 44. To what did Bell dedicate the last years of his life? Number 45. What can we conclude about Alexander Graham Bell? Number 46. Which of the following statements is not true? Number 47. How many years did Bell dedicate to aviation? Questions 48 through 50 are based on the following explanation of life insurance products to a customer. Now that you know you want to purchase life insurance, you must choose from two types. The amount of money paid periodically for an insurance policy is a premium. The type of life insurance you choose will affect the amount of the premium you pay. Term life insurance is purchased for a given period of time, or term. At the end of the term, the insurance expires. It insures your life based on a formula that considers how long you are expected to live. This product provides the greatest coverage for the least amount of money. You do not pay any money as an investment in addition to the insurance cost. If you choose to purchase insurance after the expiration, the premium will be higher because it is calculated on your attained age and at that point you will be older than you are now. The longer the premium is guaranteed to remain constant, the greater the premium will be because it reflects the average cost of insurance for all years being covered. Cash value life insurance, on the other hand, has a component fund in which the life insurance company deposits part of the premium and pays interest earned on its investments in mortgages, bonds, stocks, and other investments. The balance of the premium purchases term insurance, which is calculated in the same way as if you purchased term life insurance. Consequently, the premium is significantly higher than that of term life insurance. However, most cash value life insurance products have a fixed premium schedule and remain in effect throughout your life. In many cases, the interest earned on the investment portion of the premium will ultimately pay the premiums so that at some point you can discontinue making payments out of pocket. Once the fund has started to accumulate, you may borrow some of the funds at a low interest rate receive retirement income, or even stop paying premiums. This type of policy also builds up a cash value, so that if you want to cancel the policy, some money is actually returned, unlike the term policy, which has no value other than the insurance. Number 48. Which of the following is not a reason to buy cash value insurance?
Number 49. Why is cash value life insurance more expensive than term life insurance? Number 50. Which of the following is a benefit of term life insurance? This is the end of the practice test 1 listening comprehension section.